could spend a million dollars on this unit, making it safer. And it's only going to be as safe as the unit next door. So, those types of things should be taken into consideration. The main electric service panel is on the exterior, it's on the far wall, the east wall. Basically these windows face south, the unit is facing south. This is the door, it's got the leaking, when it rains the floor gets wet. Okay. Some of it's because I left it open, alright, threshold gasket. The main electric service disconnects on this wall, it's 100 amps. That makes this electric service panel it makes this service panel a sub-panel, a sub-panel. A couple of things going on here. An electric service panel, it was okay when this home was built, I get that, all right? But if it was built today, I mean, you gotta reach over the, your, your equipment, you gotta reach over your equipment to get to that. And you're supposed to have a 36 inch free space in front of your service panels. What you're supposed to have. What else we got going on in here? <laughs> okay. What's we got going on in here? We got an electric braided cable coming in to the power supply. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. It even has antioxidant paste on there. And there's some debate on whether that's even necessary, but uh, Texas Real Estate Commission says that would have been a, a deficiency if I had not called that to your attention. And uh, that's only on these cables, not, not in the other connections with aluminum. L1 and L2 are coming in here. If this cabinet was installed, no it wouldn't because this is a sub-panel. Never mind. L1 and L2 are coming in here. And then this is all the cables coming in here. And that's called bundling. Okay. We have these large holes because we do not know where L1 and L2 are coming in. This box was made in a factory somewhere. We have these smaller ones, these smaller holes. See, those are for the regular wiring to come through because you're only supposed to bring in two at a time. I'm not supposed to have three, six, eight, ten, like that. It's called bundling. It's very common. I hate discounting my work. I really do. But it is very common. And again, Every unit here is done like that. Mine's at home is done like that, but my house isn't for sale, and you shouldn't have to live like me. What else have we got going on in here? Well, another thing we got going on here is we got white hots. Now, if you do not know that those wires coming into those breakers are hot, then you know you don't belong in the cabinet. I get that. You don't even belong in here. But there's supposed to be these white wires coming in are supposed to be wrapped with black tape. Black tape. That's what's supposed to happen. All right, another thing we noticed, and I think this is going to be in another video, in another video, but whatever. Uh, the smallest 220 circuits that we have coming in here, you know, are 30 amps. And the condensing unit, the air conditioning condensing unit, requires a maximum of 20 amps, so it's overfused. Overfused. Another thing that we're noticing here, well, this is, is that 20 and a 30? on a 220, so we got some mismatched breakers. That's good. I don't see that every day. It happens. Got some mismatched breakers right there. Maybe that's why the label is kind of jacked up on this thing. See that? It's just really kind of hard to understand. Interesting. So if that's actually the air conditioner, I don't think it is. Then half of it might be fused right. <laughs> You know, close, only counts from hammer grenades. Another thing, these 220s, see this, the red and the black, that's a 220. You're supposed to have uh, trip ties, trip ties on the handles. These are called the handles. <laughs> these, are called the ha these are called the handles on the breaker, where my finger is. You're supposed to have trip ties right in between there, so we don't have trip ties. Wow, bud. You through? No, I'm not through. Another thing we got in here is paint. Now, I understand the warranty is long gone, but you know the code says you're not supposed to have any paint or combustible materials. Or combustible materials, you're not supposed to have those inside an electric service panel. You're not. And there you go. What else, bud? Are you through? No, I'm not through. Okay. We've got ground wires and neutral wires on this bus bar. 
You can do that in the main panel, the main disconnect out by the meter. But you don't do that here. You can get current, you know, errant current flowing through the system. Errant current flowing through the system. And also this tells us that we've got some aluminum wiring. This is an aluminum wiring house. So we're going to talk about that here real soon. So just hang on. Not through yet. And you're not supposed to have a gap between the cabinet and the wall more than an eighth of an inch. Eight sixteenth of an inch. So we've got a large gap that compromises the fire blocking. we got neutrals and grounds on a sub panel. We've got paint inside the panel and combustible material. We're missing trip ties. We've got mismatched breakers. We've got bundling. We've got paint in the cabinet. Did I say that enough times? Okay. This is the 220 for the laundry. That's kind of interesting because by all outward appearances, it looks like it was wired properly. The only reason I pulled that out, to be honest, I don't really pull things out unless I have aluminum wiring, which we have aluminum wiring. But I just knew the age. I just knew that they would bootleg that, but it doesn't look like they did. I have no idea what this transformer goes to. No idea. These 110s in the laundry area, okay, they're not GFCI protected. Nor are the 110s in the kitchen not GFCI protected. Nor is the one outside not GFCI protected. Nor are the two upstairs in the bathroom not protected. There is no GFCI protection in this home. There's no AFCI protection in this home. When this home was built, it wasn't required to have AFCI anywhere, and it doesn't. You know, but it's a safety device that the Texas Real Estate Commission feels I should be compelled to tell you about. So I am. I'm telling you about it. What else about it? Uh, GFCI, I think it might have been required outside when this home was built. Maybe, you know. It might have been required in the bathroom, maybe. But it wasn't required in the kitchen. It wasn't required in the laundry. So, but these are all safety items that, again, the Texas Real Estate Commission feels like I should be compelled to tell you about. Since we are in the laundry, uh, there should be a label indicating how far this closed door event goes should be. You're not supposed to have corrugated material inside the wall. And I got a still image of this and I'm just going to put some light in here and see. I can't even tell where it goes. Where does this thing go? I'll have to play that back to see if it has some really cool effects. Coming along here, this electric receptacle outlet. I decided to give up on this one. I mean, as far as you know, further investigation, because you see how it's burned out right there, and then um, see how it's rusting right there. So I just did not want to get any farther into that. So I jumped over here. I jumped over here. So what we've got, we've got aluminum wiring. And they've addressed it by this method called pigtailing. That's what those yellow wire nuts are. The problem with that is yellow wire nuts are not acceptable. In fact, none of it really is, according to the Consumer Protection Agency. But as far as the insurance companies with the Texas Real Estate Commission is concerned, they should be purple wire nuts. You can see where that they actually use some antioxidant paste. That's a good thing. And as far as pigtail, it's all put together. I mean, they tried real hard, you know. God bless them. They tried real hard. They just did it wrong. They tried real hard. They just did it wrong. It should have been purple wire nuts if pigtailing is an acceptable application to you. There's others. There's others. Um, another unacceptable application that I'm more fond of, it's kind of new, is installing AFCIs in the panels because that's arcs. This is all about arcs and sparks. So problem solved. Another one is to have aluminum rated receptacles and switches. Problem solved. Then there's these things called crimping, very expensive. And then I think King has got a lugging, you know, connector that goes in there. Uh, King Industries, um, you know, more affordable, and that's uh, it's not a bad way to go either. So you're, you're probably not going to pull all the wire out of this unit. So you know, having it properly pigtailed, you know, is good enough for most people to be honest. I mean, most people settle for that. But I'm gonna, it's gonna be in your report. I'm gonna give you options. I'm going to give you links to the Consumer Protection Agency. Let me 
you can make the best decision that you can. And again, we started this saying that if you spend a million dollars making this safer, it's only as safe as that unit over there, and it's only as safe as that unit over there, and it's only as safe as that unit over there, which is tied to those units over there and there. So 